Have you ever wondered how it is like to be in Nurse Practitioner Fellowship Program? In the previous episode, I reviewed differences and common features of fellowship and residency programs for nurse practitioners. In this episode, I'm going to welcome Michelle Tom, who is a nurse practitioner currently in a nurse practitioner residency program at the biggest hospital in Hawaii, who used to work with me as a student about two years ago. She was one of the best students I had, and she's now in a fellowship program. She's going to share with me and with us how it is like to be in a fellowship program, pros and cons of being a fellowship program, and how you may be able to get into one of those fellowship programs. Let's dive in. Hi, we're going to get into today's topic in a minute, but before we're going to dive into today's topic, I just want to mention that we are giving out free access to our online workshop. This workshop is about confidence. We had this workshop and we got so many good responses, feedbacks from the audience. So I wanted to give it out to more people so that you can boost your confidence and get more career opportunity, get into your dream nurse practitioner programs and get pay raises. How you can sign up and how you can get access to this workshop is go to a website, USA. Uh, dot jnpproject.com slash confidence again usa.jnpproject.com slash confidence and sign up for our free email list this is a 90 minute online workshop you can watch it as many times as you want it also comes with a handout of the slides that i used in the workshop Again, you know, a lot of people loved it. It really helps to boost your confidence. So I want you to have the opportunity. So please sign up. All right, let's get into today's episode. Thank you, Michelle, so much for letting me interview you. It's so, so, so good to see you. I haven't seen you for, I think you worked with me about two years ago when you are, was, what you were you at the time, like, were you in at the time? I believe I was either in my second or third year of nurse practitioner school at University of Hawaii. So it was through my women's health rotation that we got to work together. That's true. That's true. So so Michelle works at one of the largest hospital that has the magnet status, which is the only hospital in Hawaii who has a magnet status. And she is a primary care fellowship program right now. So <laughs> I want to ask a lot of questions about, you know, a fellowship program, pros and cons. But first of all, Michelle, if you can tell me about how did you decide to become a nurse practitioner? I know you have a different background to begin with, but you decide to become a nurse practitioner and maybe why you chose family nurse practitioner versus different, you know, field and then also what you do now. Definitely. Well, thanks for having me, Mickey. But yeah, so before I was a nurse practitioner, I was a dietitian. So I worked in both the inpatient and the outpatient setting. And so I had a lot of opportunities to educate patients on healthy lifestyle changes and felt like I was really making an impact. But mm -hmm. after a few years working as a dietitian, I began wanting to expand my scope of practice. And that's how I ended up deciding on pursuing a career in as a nurse practitioner. So I graduated in August 2022, and I'm now at Queens Medical Center's Primary Care Nurse Practitioner Fellowship Program. Wonderful. So was there, you know, I think there are some options to choose, like you want to get into like, you know, acute care or primary care, adult deontology, or women's health, and different programs available. Was there any reason why you chose family nurse practitioner track over the other ones? Yeah, definitely. So because of my dietitian background, 
I feel like I have a good amount of knowledge on like nutrition and lifestyle and management for chronic conditions. And I felt like going into the family nurse practitioner route would help me utilize that background and continue to share my knowledge in those areas, as well as expand my scope of practice. I'm also interested in global health and rural health and, you know, leveling the playing field so that everybody can get equal care. And so I felt like going the family nurse practitioner route was a great opportunity for me to learn about care throughout the whole lifespan from children all the way to geriatrics Mm -hmm. and care that I'd be able to provide no matter where I was in the world. So that's how I decided in that specific family nurse practitioner area. Amazing. I just want to mention you guys that Michelle was one of the top students that I ever taught. So she was Mm -hmm. So amazing, as you can tell already. But so you are in primary care fellowship program right now. So how many how many people are in the program? So there's currently two fellows. So me and another fellow in the primary NP fellowship route. Queens also has an acute care nurse practitioner fellowship route as well. And they take two fellows for that program. Wow. So it's very, very, very competitive to get in because we have way more nurse practitioners graduated, you know, from from Hawaii, but also I'm sure there are a lot of applicants coming from different parts of the United States. So that must be very hard to get in. When you apply, what was the process of being selected? Like you went through the interviews and like essays or what was the process? Yeah, so there was a few essays that we had to write. From there, after I submitted that, I was called back for an interview where I interviewed with the director of all advanced practice providers at Queens and the manager of the fellowship program. So it was a two-person panel. I think the interview was anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. And then from there, just waited to hear back in hopes of getting into the program. I'm so happy that you got in. I mean, like you have all the, you know, you have dietitian background, which is amazing. You definitely use that, you know, being a nurse practitioner, especially working in a primary care. So, you know, you decided to enter fellowship program. There's a, a different, you know, there's another, at least there's another residency program exists in Hawaii, which is the health center that I work at. And then also you can decide to go into just just straight up work as an independent nurse practitioner. So what was the reason why you decided to get into the fellowship program? And then, you know, well, later on, we can talk about pros and cons of being in a fellowship program. Definitely. So yeah, there's definitely a lot of routes that you can take after you graduate as an NP. There's a lot of people that decide to go straight into working on their own. And then there's other people that prefer to get additional training through fellowship programs and things like that. So for me, mentorship and training was extremely important. And I wanted to get as much training and mentorship as possible before working on my own so that I could build my own confidence and my abilities and build my knowledge base. So that's why I chose to do the fellowship program. I also knew I wanted to stay in Oahu if that was possible. And so there's only two residency programs on Oahu. There's one offered at Queens, and then there's another offered at Waianae Coast Comprehensive Center. And both are excellent programs. I have a few classmates in Waianae and they're getting oh, great wonderful. experience as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, Queens Medical Center has been rated number one hospital in Hawaii and is also one of the largest hospitals in Hawaii as well. It's also been recognized for providing outstanding quality care. And so I knew I wanted to work at Queens if possible. And that's why I applied to this fellowship program because I thought Queens just has a really strong background. And so far I've been so impressed and have been having such an amazing experience. So I feel really fortunate to have been given this opportunity. Wow. Wow. So that's, that's awesome. So, you know, so what entails the fellowship program? There must be like didactics and then also like rotation. Like, can you tell me like how your a week looked like? 
Yes, definitely. So the fellowship program is a year long program. I started late June. And so I'll be finishing up in about six months or so. So on Mondays and Wednesdays, I'm at a set primary care clinic with a doctor that I'm paired with for the whole year. And so at the primary care clinic, I help manage patients' chronic conditions, as well as any acute issues or concerns that come up. And then on Thursdays and Fridays, I rotate through different specialties. So far, I've done inpatient psych, pain and palliative care, urgent care, outpatient and inpatient diabetes, employee health, women's health, pre-surgery, neurology, and pediatrics. So there's a bunch of rotations that we get to get hands-on experience in. I'll also be rotating through geriatrics and cardiology. So Um, the actually, oh, sorry. But the program actually sounds more like a residency program, although they use sometimes, you know, the fellowship and residency program, some people use it interchangeably. Sure. Some people use it more like fellowship is more specialized, like surgeries and stuff. And then residency is more like the population based, like primary care or something like that. For this case, it does sound a little bit more toward residency. Maybe they sure. just use the term interchangeably. But so when you are working at the primary care clinic, so you say you work with a physician, do you Mm -hmm. have your own patient and then, you know, you can ask any questions or do you, do you see, you know, physicians, patients, like what is the difference between being a student? student and then being a fellow is there any specific difference that's a great question so at the specific clinic that i'm at i will see patients on the doctor's panel so i don't have my own set of patients on my own panel so the difference between a student and a fellow though is that we have more autonomy so basically i'll go in i'll see the patient i'll come up with you know the diagnosis my assessment and then what I plan to do. So whether that be ordering any blood work, any tests, x-rays, all of those things, or any medications. And then I just review that with my preceptor. And then I'm the one who puts in those orders under her oversight. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely more autonomy and responsibility that comes with a fellowship compared to when you're still in school as a nurse practitioner. I do know that I think it just depends on what clinic you're in. Some clinics will have their NPs have their own patient panel, whereas other ones will have basically the doctor sees them for one visit and then the next visit they'll see the NP and it'll kind of go back and forth. That's kind of the flow that I see at my clinic, but I know it definitely varies. And so you are licensed, you are actually licensed as a nurse practitioner. So you prescribe under your name. So you feel a little bit more responsibility. Exactly. Because something happened and, you know, when you're a student, uh, you know, you practice, you know, writing. And we, did, we did this too, that we practice, you know, how to write prescriptions and stuff like that. But you, it's kind of like a pretend you don't actually do it because mm-hmm. you're not licensed yet. But when you become a fellow, your license already so whatever order is actually you do it on your own so you it does come with the responsibility um so you have to kind of think it thoroughly exactly yeah and so we're also the ones who are usually writing the the notes in the emr um Mm -hmm. and then my preceptor will co-sign them afterwards yeah so there's definitely more there's definitely more autonomy and responsibility And then eventually they're going to open up my schedule in a few months so that I'll start seeing patients pretty much on my own. That will still be on their panel, but it'll just be added responsibility. And there'll also be a ramp up schedule of how many patients I'll be seeing a day. Um, Yeah. Glad that you're in a fellowship program. Am I glad that I'm in a fellowship program? Yes, I'm definitely glad. I just, I feel like I've gotten such good mentorship in this program and have learned so much as well as being able to network with a bunch of different providers. And they are very kind in ramping me up and not overloading me with a bunch of patients all at once. It's definitely been a gradual increase, which has really helped with my own stress level, but I'm also trying to provide as much of the best care as I can. Right. So that's probably one of the pro of being in a fellowship program, because if you just go go work as an independent nurse practitioner, 
you are expected to work same as a senior nurse practitioners who've been working for many years. As a nurse practitioner, we always ask for high productivity, meaning seeing you know certain num number of patients per day and stuff like that. But that pressure is lesser for the fellowship program or residency program because you're not you're not expected to be productive, but rather you you're there to kind of learn. Exactly. Uh, so yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. So it's a really supportive environment. And then another part of the fellowship program is that we do do didactics. So we'll sit in with the med students and the residents in specific le lectures on different topics. And then we also have to do a evidence-based project within the year that we're doing the fellowship program. So me and the other fellow are working together and we're setting up a, a remote blood pressure monitoring program um, in respective clinics. The physicians had previously wanted this kind of program set up just to help better manage people with uncontrolled hypertension. So we'll be starting this within a few weeks and we're really excited. Hopefully we can make a good impact on patients. That's so amazing. And, you know, being a nurse practitioner, we also must carry on research, you know, our research duty, you know, because that's how we advance our practice and prove that we are, our work is worth it and needed in, in a community. So a downside of just go straight work is like, you're so occupied of just seeing as many patients as you can, and you don't really have time or opportunity to work on those research projects and stuff, which is also very, very important. And mm -hmm. I think I like what you said. A lot of people undervalue the, you know, the importance of making connections. Mm -hmm. And I was, you know, I when I graduated, there was no residency or fellowship program in Hawaii. So, you know, I, I didn't have any option. And I just go straight to work. And it was super hard, especially for the first six months or so. Um, I was working with two OBGYN. And one of them went to into maternity leave right away. So like, here's a patient of hers. You take care of them. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm new grad. Like, you know, I was so afraid. So yeah. I think I can totally see the value of a fellowship program or residency program. But also, I was so lucky because I was so close to my classmates who went to different fields because I, I graduated from family nurse practitioner program. And then some of them went to orthopedics, some of them went to dermatology and, you know, endocrinology and stuff like that. So I had some resource, but I think you officially built these connections in a different specialty. And mm -hmm. when you work either in the primary care or urgent care and stuff like that, even when you work in a woman's health, you have questions in different fields mm -hmm. and you, you know, you have a resource to be able to ask questions. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's so different from just getting some email or calls from somebody that I don't know, then, it's a consultation is also legal. So, you know, like some people might hesitate to give legal advice to people who mm -hmm. don't know, but if they know, oh, Michelle is great. You know, I worked with her before. I would love mm -hmm. to help her. So like you are building this fantastic connection that will be helpful for the rest of your career, I think. Yeah, exactly. That's how I feel as well. Yeah. So Awesome. So, you know, the pay is the pay lesser, I think in general, fellowship program or residency program offer less pay because you're there to get trained mostly. Mm -hmm. You get paid to some extent, but it's lesser like 70% or whatever percentage. Is that true? Yeah, so that's a great thing to bring up. And I think it's definitely something to consider if you're considering a fellowship program. So I believe the national average salary of an NP fellow or resident can range from 65000 to 90000 but it can vary depending on where you live and the cost of living. So for instance, in Hawaii, since cost of living is so high, it is high, it's on the higher side, but it is, it is less than a provider who is working on their own. So I think that's definitely something to consider is if that's feasible for your lifestyle, if you think that, you know, trading that 
one year drop in salary for, you know, the opportunities, education and knowledge mentorship that you get. I think it's just kind of weighing those pros and cons and what works for you. But yeah, it tends to be lower than a provider operating on their own. But I think, yeah, that's a great point. And people need to really think about not just now, you know, it's only one year, sure. but after you finish the fellowship program, then you are more marketable. You have very special skill and mm-hmm. employers for your future employers will see that you graduate from this prestigious fellowship program and you're very confident. You have experience in so many different fields like pre-op or employee health, which I don't even know, you know, if you can get that specific training anywhere else. Like, I think Mm -hmm. you don't learn that in school. So that is a really good investment. Like you have a little bit of cut in pay for the first year, but Mm -hmm. you know, you're more marketable and you can negotiate your, your wage or salary later on once you graduate. Mm -hmm. So You know, I think people definitely should think long-term effect of that investment, not just one year. So I think it's definitely a good, you know, if they can get in, you know, it's very competitive, but, you know, I think that's a great option, especially for those who never been a nurse or like years of experience is not too long, or even international nurses who are don't have much experience working as a nurse in the United States and you're still learning the U.S. healthcare system, I think mm-hmm. it's a, a good graduate step up. Yes. Yeah, I definitely yeah. agree. Mm-hmm. So if, if you give any advice to nurse practitioner students and then new grad nurse practitioners, oh, well, I think maybe a different advice. So maybe let's talk about for nurse practitioner students who are still in the program what can they do at this point? Because we just talked about this before we start recording, but mm-hmm. you know, I think you need to actually prepare before you finish nurse practitioner program. You actually have to build up even beforehand. So any advice that, that they can do to improve their career projections and stuff? Yeah, that's a great question. I think that's a very important question to be asking during school, especially early on, because, you know, like we discussed, a lot of fellowship programs are very competitive, but then also, you know, a lot of the jobs that are being posted will also be very competitive. You know, there's a lot of people, maybe even some of your classmates that will be applying to the same job as you, and they're all very smart. So given that all of these opportunities will be competitive. It's important to think about what you can do in the moment in order to differentiate yourself from other people and to make sure that you stand out. And so things to keep in mind are, what areas are you interested in? You know, what what do you wanna do after the, the program or schooling ends? And then finding either work opportunities or volunteer opportunities to start doing while you're in school. So it shows your commitment and hard work and desire to, you know, further your knowledge and experience while you're still in school. So yeah, that could be volunteering. I also think that getting nursing experience, if you can, is pretty important as well. A lot of people think that, oh, I have to get acute care experience during school. If that's not feasible for you, I think it's extremely valuable to also get outpatient nursing experience as well. So I think you can get a a lot of knowledge and things that you can advocate for yourself, regardless of whether you're in the inpatient or outpatient setting. Wonderful. So what do you think, you know, there must be a lot of applicants applying for that two positions in the fellowship program. And what do you think uh, separated from, from others, you from others? Like, why did you get selected? So I am interested in like leadership positions and trying to always improve not only myself, but also the programs that I'm involved in and to make sure that for the next students that come after us, that they're getting a great experience. And if I can help out in any way, then I would want to be involved in it. So during school, I was involved in some of the leadership committees to help bridge any gaps that there were between 
you know, school administration and the teachers and the students and areas that they saw for improvement. So I was involved with that. And then I think my previous experience as a dietitian helped set me apart too, and my passion for global and rural health. Mm -hmm. And so because of that interest, I had done several medical missions abroad. One was in Vietnam, where I talked about medical nutrition therapy at different Vietnamese hospitals and saw just crazy differences in care and treatment. And then in college, I had gone on a trip to South Africa to evaluate HIV, um, the HIV impact on impoverished communities. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think those were specific passions and interests that I had and seeking out opportunities for that and getting that hands-on experience. I think that is one of the big things that helped set me apart from other people. Wonderful. Yeah, I would definitely choose you as <laughs> <Thanks> no, <me>. <laughs> definitely, you know, I, I had no question about why you were chosen, but oh, you know, I think you. for nurse practitioner students to know that thinking about what your passion is, and then it, not only just think about the, your first job, but like, what's your career goal, like in five years and 10 years, like, what do you want to do? You know, I think, especially like you're already like had a goal of contributing to global health and rural health you know, that you had a big picture. And, you know, I think that's so important. What about the new grad nurse practitioners like yourself? Like, you know, what was helpful so far? Or, you know, like, is there any advice that maybe like for those who just graduating, like, in a, I don't know, it's, it's still January, so maybe nobody's graduating right now. But like, who is about to graduate? Is there any advice? Yeah. So I think it's, I had a few months off before I started my fellowship program. And I just took that time to kind of take a breath after going through all of the school. So I think that's important is to just reset and decompress from everything that we've experienced going to school. And then when you're ready and starting to look for jobs, what I thought was helpful was looking up common questions that people ask during interview questions. I knew people would ask about like my background, my interests, my experience. And so writing answers to those questions made it easier for me to, um, you know, answer those questions when it came to crunch time in the interviews. I think that helped. Mm -hmm. Um, I think depending on where you apply, some jobs will give you situational based questions So give me a time in your job career where you had to encounter a difficult patient that you didn't agree with. And how did you, you know, resolve that issue? So thinking about questions like that, that are situation based was really helpful for some of the interviews that I went through as well. Another piece of advice is you might not necessarily get your first pick of job right off of the bat. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. And just being okay with that. Because just working and getting experience, once you get that under your belt, you'll be more marketable and able to get the job that you're really passionate about eventually. So I think it's just important to get your foot in the door, build relationships and work hard. And then eventually you'll get to where you want to go. So did you apply for multiple positions or just the fellowship program? Yeah, I did apply to multiple positions. I was offered one position and then was turned down by others. But I think it's also important to just not take, you know, things personally. If if one job rejects you, that's okay. Just, Mm -hmm. you know, try hard for, you know, the next job that you're applying for. So I also think that, you know, you should apply for multiple jobs because then you can negotiate too that you know your your salary wage or working conditions or you know kind of thing so I when I applied for jobs as a new grad I intentionally applied like I wanted to make sure I have like at least two to three offers and then I can say well I'm very interested in in this position however the the other job is offering me higher salary is there any way to match or get closer to that you know kind of thing so if you don't have any other offer it's hard to negotiate those conditions like oh I just want to make more money versus if you just say well I'm really deciding because the other job job offer and also makes it look like you're 
desirable that the exactly. other people want you. And so I think that's a little bit of tactic as well. Yeah, no, that's a great point. I think it's important to, you know, not put your eggs all in one basket and definitely, you know, send out your res- resume to a, a bunch of different job applications just so that you have multiple options to go to. It helps with negotiation. But then also I've noticed that some job requirements are that you have two years experience or more. Honestly, I would suggest just submitting your resume anyways, because the worst thing that they can say is no. And Absolutely. what gets you far is, you know, your confidence in your abilities, the passions that you've pursued, and your willingness to learn and be open to, you know, feedback and, and constructive criticism and things like that. If, if they know that you're, you know, perceptive to learning and open to it, and that you're not set in your ways, I think that goes a long way. That's such a good advice that even if like, let's say you apply for the position required two years of nurse practitioner experience, but you can say, well, I, I've been working as a dietitian for many years. And that's also very, very useful clinical experience too. So, and even if you don't have like, yeah, like you said, you know, just give it a try. And if you are like, a, really want to work here and learn and welcome constructive feedback and, you know, I really want to work here, then, you know, they might take you. So don't, don't limit yourself and sell yourself short uh, just because you're scared to be rejected because everybody gets rejected. And, you know, I, I think in the end you realize that, well, maybe it wasn't meant to be. Exactly. Yeah, Exactly. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. For the future, I would like to have you as official lecturer for some other opportunity. You know, you guys are watching YouTube and podcasts. If you have any more questions about, you know, or requests about these topics, let us know. But thank you, Michelle, for your time.